In obedience, there are three distinct positions that we want the dogs to be able to do when they're stationary. One is a sit, another is a stand, and the third is the down. And they're subsets of the down. Right. What she's doing here is a sphinx down, which means every th both hind legs are even under her. And then there is the hip down, where they are flopped over on one hip, so both hind legs are kind of sticking out on one side. And that's preferred for the downstay, but for position change work that I'm discussing here, we want a sphinx down. One of the groups of exercises that I do together are what I refer to as position changes. So there are three positions, there are six position changes. I want my puppies to learn how to move their bodies in a certain way going from one position to another. So it's not only the final position I'm looking for, it's how they move from one position to another. The first pair I want to talk about is stand to down and down to stand. For the stand into a down, I take my hand and go from their nose slowly down between their front feet on a backwards diagonal. And then for the stand up from the down, I do the opposite. So a slow movement up diagonally forward. Ideally, they basically keep their front feet and back feet in the same place and just fold down and then stand back up again. The next pair I want to talk about is stand to sit and sit to stand, which I also call the kickback stand. For the kickback stand, the puppy's front feet stay in place and their hind feet kick back. They don't have to do this, but it looks sharp and it really defines the stand much better for the dog. The, uh, for the sit from the stand, what I'm looking for is a tuck sit, so the front feet stay in place and the rear end tucks forward, basically the opposite of the kickback stand. One thing I'm not crazy about is how much Sonic keeps lifting that right front foot, which is why I put my hand on her shoulders here. It's something I've noticed developing in her. Could be a little bit of just weight shifted too much on the left foot, or just she wants to use her foot like that. So I'm trying to discourage it with my hand on her shoulder. In order to get the kickback stand, I start with the dog's nose up above the top of their head, and then move slowly down and forward and then under their chin. Just, I want to shift her weight enough forward via moving her head so that her rear end frees up enough that she can lift her back feet up. Something kind of zen about it, you have to sort of just find the balance point for each dog. What I see is that usually once they can do it a couple dozen times, if you do it right, the puppy does it right. I'm getting out the platform because she was shifting her rear end away from me just a little bit and I just wanted to block her ability to do that and of course then she had to go check out the platform but that's why I have that there sometimes I'll just put them up against a cupboard or back of a couch or something like that so that they can't move their fanny away from me sometimes it's a question of just having their nose pulled too far the opposite direction so that they move away from you Some dogs will do better facing you when you're working on the kickback stand than sitting perpendicular to you. So if they're moving forward very much, try it facing you. It just reduces the chance of moving forward. The last pair I want to talk about is sit to down and down to sit. I have my dogs go down for the downstay from a sit in heel position. But the main one I want to talk about here is the sit up from the down. If you notice, I'm having her keep her rear end in place by going up and back and getting her to lift her front feet back in, as she goes into the sit. That's my preference for the sit signal in utility. They don't have to do it that way, but it does help ensure that they stay right in place if they really understand that.